Hi, welcome to the next of our series of mini lectures. Uh, as promised, we're going to leave the mathematics a little bit and not do any derivations and try to go on and get some idea of what this rather complicated looking expression for a Gaussian beam really means and how to do some calculations with it, particularly in regards to how a Gaussian beam propagates. So, at the end of the last class, we'd come up with this expression which had three parts, uh, an amplitude factor that essentially says what the shape of the beam is and how that varies with the radial direction, r, and also with the z direction, z, and there's r. Um, and this is what we're going to be dealing with most. This is most what we care about uh, for the simple reason that we can certainly measure the power or amplitude of a um, optical beam, but the phase factors which come next can be very, very difficult to measure at optical frequencies. It's not to say they're not important, but for day-to-day -day stuff we don't really deal with optical phase that much. But there are two phase factors. One is the longitudinal phase, and as we saw before, a uh, laser beam varies pretty much like a plane wave with the exce exception of this tangent factor, but remember that this factor can only go from minus pi to pi in value, no matter what value z has and compared to k times z, which will be millions or billions, uh, one pi doesn't really make that much of a difference. Another factor is the radial phase factor, which essentially shows how the phase of the wave changes in the radial direction as we go out, and essentially says how curved the phase front of the beam is. And this can have applications in interferometry and other things we're not going to cover in this class. Um, and is important to remember for that reason, but we're not going to use it that much. So let's go and see how we use this equation. Let's go and really sort of dissect the Gaussian beam, if you will, which describes laser beam propagation. Um, what we see right here, what we see right here, is the parameters of the Gaussian beam. And the first parameter is z, where you are on the beam. And z, of course, is, is out in this direction, z. And we are starting right here at z equals zero. And we define z equals zero to be the place where the diameter of the beam is the smallest or alternately where the waves are plane waves. And z is measured and defined to be at the beam waist, w naught. So z is one of the parameters of our Gaussian beam, where you are on the laser beam. Another parameter, of course, is the beam waist, w naught. Um, and that's a fundamental property of the Gaussian beam. W naught is where the beam has its smallest spot size, if you're talking about propagation of the Gaussian beam. And the definition of W naught is if the peak amplitude of the, of the field is defined to be 1, then the distance from the center out in the radial direction where the field is 1 over E of its original value is defined to be w naught, so it's essentially the 1 over e point of the beam in terms of the field. Another parameter, of course, that we need is the wavelength of the light. And remember, the wavelength is just one period in space or one spatial period, so it's the difference between phase front shown there, and you're usually given this, each laser has a particular wavelength that you're going to be given in a problem. Another parameter is w of z. And this is how the beam waist changes with z. And you notice we can describe this if we know the wavelength and we know the starting beam waist, w naught, and the wavelength and where we are on the beam. We can calculate a new beam waist by this formula. And essentially, if you think about the beam propagating out here, and again, we take the amplitude to be 1 at this point, the 1 over e point in amplitude right here is defined to be w of z at that particular point. Finally, of course, we have the radial phase factor, r, and let me go ahead and get a green pen. And so this radial phase factor essentially is essentially the length of this arrow, r of z, the distance from the beam waist where the beam started, and it's the radius of the spherical phase fronts at some distance a long way away from the beam. And the uh, radius of curvature of those phase fronts is given by this formula right here, R of Z, which of course has the beam waist, the wavelength, and where you are on the beam. And so in review, the position Z on the beam 
the beam waist W naught, the wavelength are the three fundamental parameters, and then we define two more parameters. The waist is a function of position, and the radial phase is a function of position, and these five parameters, or if you want to get technical about it, the three fundamental parameters, Z, W naught, and lambda, are all you need to define a Gaussian beam. So we've gone from that horrible convoluted derivation and formula to a couple of parameters that describe any beam. So let's take a look at a couple of examples here. Um, oh, and we've got one more parameter. Let's not forget that. Uh, Z naught is used in many formulas. And Z naught is given by this formula up here. And Z naught you can think of as the turning point in a Bode plot. It's roughly the point where the beam goes from being plane waves and traveling in a perfectly straight line to where the beam starts to turn and angle outward and propagate at some very small propagation angle, theta. And we use this factor a lot in our calculations. And certainly, if you calculate Z naught, uh, your calculations are a lot easier to do. And it's essentially where the beam goes from going in a perfectly straight line to starting to spread out. So we've got three regions of interest we can describe with a Gaussian beam. Um, two sort of extremes of our formula and one middle point. One of the extremes, of course, is very close to the waist. Um, so Z is much, much less than Z naught. In this case, W of Z does not depend on Z. It's approximately equal to W naught. And as I said before, close to the waist, the beam doesn't spread out. It goes perfectly straight. And R of Z the radius of curvature is equal to infinity because these waves close to the beam have planar face fronts and they act like confined plane waves.